one last appendix, right? So appendix 11 in the Yusuf Ali commentator, uh, commentary that he, that he puts in his Quran translation, we have oaths and adjurations in the Quran. An oath is an invocation of the name of God or some person or object held sacred by the person using the invocation to witness the truth of a solemn affirmation and to emphasize that affirmation. An adjuration is a solemn appeal to a person or persons to do some act or to believe some important statement by the evidence of something great or sublime or remarkable or out of the ordinary. On these subjects, as they defined, let us review the teaching of the Holy Quran. Among the Arabs, the use of oaths became so common that it almost ceased to have any solemn meaning. On the other hand, when they wanted to suppress the rights of women or do some unjust acts, they would resort to an oath to do so, and then plead that they were bound by their oath when pressure was brought to bear on them to desist from their injustice. Thus, they doubly dishonor oaths. They took the name of Allah lightly, and on the other hand, they made an oath, an excuse for not doing what was right and just. It is much to be feared that our own contemporaries are not free from such forms of disrespect to God. Such practices are condemned. The strongest terms in Al-Quran make not Allah's name an excuse in your oaths against doing good or acting rightly or making peace between persons. See Surah 2, Ayat 200. 24. Perjury is condemned as deception which hurts both the deceiver and the deceived. Take not your oaths to practice deception between yourselves, with the result that someone's foot may slip after it was firmly planted, and ye may have to taste the evil consequences of having hindered men from the path of a law, and a mighty wrath descend on you. 1694. See also 377. You must not only fulfill your oaths, but you must fulfill all covenants express or implied and your obligations to every kind of every kind without reference to an oath. And see Surah 5, 1. Considering the harm caused by thoughtless oaths in which there was no intention to deceive or to do wrong, it is provided that they may be expiated for. Allah will not call you to account for what is futile in your oaths, but he will call you to account for your deliberate oaths for expiation, feed ten indigent persons, or clothe them, or give a, share, uh, or give a slave his freedom. If that is beyond your means, fast for three days. That is the expiation for the oaths ye have sworn, but keep your oaths, 589 and 66.2, right? Some examples may be cited of the false oaths which were used for deception. The hypocrites, in whose hearts is a disease, swore their strongest oaths by Allah that they would be with the Muslimin, but treachery was in their hearts. See Surah 5, at 55 to 56, and also 24 or 53. On the other hand, the oath of Joseph's wicked brethren by law in speaking to their father, 1285, seems to be a mere explicitive. Ex explicitive, used lightly, and therefore worthy of condemnation. In passages like the following, each oath seems to be emphatic and solemn as in a court of law. 1266, by Joseph's brethren at Jacob's request. 1273, by Joseph's brethren to the Egyptians. 2157, by Abraham to the polytheists. 2697, by the denizens of hell 
when they realize they're wrong. 3756, by the righteous one in heaven, when he realizes the great danger to be escaped in life. Thirty-eight eighty-two, by the power of evil, who solemnly swears by the power of God. Forty-six thirty-four, by the denizens of hell, when they realize the truth. In the following passages addressed by law to humanity, an appeal is made to humanity's realization of God's own greatness, goodness, and glory are God's special relationship to humanity as creator, cherisher, and protector, to teach him the lesson of truth and right conduct. In English phrase, it might be rendered as I am thy Lord God, believe in me and follow my word. And so we have 465. By thy Lord, they can have no real faith until 1592. By thy Lord, we call them to account. 1656, by God, ye shall be called to account. 1663, by God, we sent messengers. 1968, by thy Lord, we shall gather them together. 34, 3, by my Lord, said by the prophet to assure men of the coming of the hour of judgment. 64, 7, and 51, 23, by the Lord of heaven and earth, this very truth, see also 70, 40, the paragraph below. And 64, 7 includes the words, Yea, by my Lord, ye shall surely be raised up. And there's some for after that. Another way in which an appeal is made to humans is by the evidence of the title of the prophets whose truth and purity were known to them are by the Holy Quran, whose wonderful power over the hearts of humanity was a miracle they witnessed before their eyes. Fifteen seventy two by thy life to enforce the lesson of the unspeakable crime of Lot's people. You know, the ones who didn't accept them. Thirty six two by the Quran full of wisdom to show the prophet's inspiration. Thirty eight one by the Quran full of admonition to show the error of the unbelievers. Forty three two by the book that makes things clear to show that the revelation is reasonable and comfortable to truth. 44, two, by the book that makes things clear. 51, by the glorious Quran full of wisdom to quell the wonders of the ignorant. Now we come to the great mystic passages of the Meccan Sawar in which Humanity is adjured to turn to the wonders of the spiritual world by striking phrases full of sublimity, full of mystery, full of symbolism, and using the wonders of the heavens and the earth by way of illustration. They are the despair of the translator because the words used are widely comprehensive with little that is precise in them. There are layers upon layers of meaning, and only the profoundest spiritual experience can probe their depths. An attempt has been made in the notes to analyze and explain some of their meaning. All that we can do here is to bring them together into the juxtaposition to help the earnest student and may be divided into three categories. Those who are introduced by the words la oximo, I do swear, or I do call the witness. Those introduced by the particle wa which is the general form of adjuration, and those mainly concerned with the judgment to come, 
which are introduced by the adverb the when. La oximum, with the first person singular, implies that special attention is drawn to something by a personal and beneficent God, and an appeal is made to his creatures. 5675, the setting of the stars. Other glories may set, but not the glory of Revelation. 6938, what ye see and what ye see not. Revelation is good for both outer and inner life. 7040, the Lord of all points in the east and the west. Allah's kingdom extends everywhere. 75, 1 through 2, the resurrection day and the self-reproaching spirit. Evil should be eschewed. 81, 15 through 18, planets, nights, and dawn. Nature may vary, but Allah's light is ever the same. 84, 16 through 18, the ruddy glow of sunset, the night, the moon. Man must travel from stage to stage. 90, 1 through 3, this city, Mecca, and mystic ties. Man is created for toil and struggle, but Allah has given him guidance. Well, that's coming with some con uh, commentary here, but... um. The great mystic symbols are signs introduced by the particle wa, by which man is adjured to turn to the higher life, are rich in suggestive imagery, which loses part of its charm by any attempt at precise definition. 37.1, by those who range themselves in rank, in rank, by those who range themselves in ranks. 51, 1 through 4, by the winds that scatter, broadcast, and so on. 51, 7, by the heavens with its numerous paths, and so on. 52, 1 through 6, by the mount of Revelation, etc. Well, etc. is what's being used here, but um, 53, 1, by the star when it goes down. 68, 1, by the pen and by the record which men write, 74, 32 to 34, by the moon, the night, the dawn, 77, one through five, by the winds sent forth, to man's prophet, etc. 79, one through five, by the angels who tear out, uh, etc. 85, one through three, by the sky displaying the zodiac signs, etc. 86, 1, by the sky and the night visitant therein. 86, 11 through 12, by the firmament, which returns in its round, and by the earth, etc. 89, 1 through 5, by the break of the day, etc. 91, 1 through 8, by the sun in its glorious splendor, by the soul, etc. 92, 1 through 3, by the night and it as it conceals the light and by the day, as it appears in glory, etc. 93, one through two, by the glorious morning light, etc. 92, nine, I mean 95, 95, one through three, by the thick and the olive, etc. 100, one through five, by the steeds that run with panting breath, etc. 103, one, by the token of time, throughout the ages. The great mystic symbols introduced by the adverb when, idha, do not in form belong to the category of adjurations, but their mystic meaning and imagery bring them within this category. They refer to the end of the present order of things and the inauguration of the new world of perfect spiritual values but they need not necessarily be understood in a definite sequence of time, such as we know it, for the spiritual world overlaps the material. 77, 8 through 11. When the stars become dim, etc. 81, 1 through 13. When the, sky, when the sun is folded up, etc. 
82, 1 through 4, when the sky is cleft asunder, etc. 84, 1 through 5, when the sky is rent asunder, etc. 99, 1 through 3, when the earth is shaken, etc. 15, every symbol is connected with the arguments of the passage concerned by way of metaphor or illustration. 74, 32, the appropriate meaning suggested is explained in the notes to each passage as it occurs. And um, I will probably find some more content to um, have midnight programs for Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.